G'day all, how are you today? Welcome to our uh, channel again. I just mentioned in my last video, whoever's watched that, is um, my FX61 is going to be going through a, a bit of a rebuild. And the main thing I wanted to do is, is upgrade the flight controller. So this is what I've got for it. It's um, There's not many around, I've noticed. Uh, a lot of lot of places out of stock with this. This is the, the Speedy B F405. Um, all my other crafts to run Maytech flight controller, so this is the first one that's gone away from that. Uh, the, the FX61 uh, is running an F4, F411 wing flight controller, which is it served its purpose, but it doesn't have a black box, and I do want a black box in the in a in in that plane. So that's the main reason why I'm. I'm uh, changing the flight controllers. I just wanted to show you what's in here. I mean, I'm going to put it together and, and, and install iNav on it and all my parameters so it's all ready to go. Then it's just a matter of, of um, wiring everything up and uh, throwing it in the air. So it comes in this box here. I'll just move this. If we take this out, you've got the three sections of the board here which, which need to be put together. So yeah, basically you get your instruction manual. Now that's it all here. So that's a fairly good, fairly good instruction manual. I'm not going to show you much with that. Um, you can download that if you really want to. And in this accessories box here is all your wiring. So you have you have all your wires that you need here. I haven't really looked into all this stuff yet. And more wiring there there's your your USB adapter there for for upgrading your firmware and you got some standoffs and some grommets in here and there is a little bit of soldering still to do um, on the bottom here if you want to use all this plan is to uh, put the three pieces of the board together I'm not going to solder anything at the moment I just want to install iNav on it and um, get everything basically set up firmware wise get it all ready for the installation okay so this is what we're going to start with what we've got uh, is putting the uh, three boards together using what we have in this bag here uh, this one here this this board here is your um, top board here uh, we go to this one next it's middle board and at the bottom here is your power distribution board Let's um, grab the second board, which we've already got here. It's already got its grommets in there. It comes like that. We will take take this board here, and we will add a couple of grommets and brass standoffs. Um, this one here goes on top. Basically like that, you've got you got your pins on this one here to match the socket on this side here. So just be wary that that's going incorrectly. You don't want to bend pins or damage anything. So just do this with a bit of care, and then gently push it in, just like that. So I will be taking this all apart. Like I said, I'm doing this just to. Um, get this flight controller set up with the firmware on it. Right next will be the top board. So there's also a couple of sockets here as well uh, and pins on the top board here so make sure you've got them going in properly. Don't force it down because you don't want to bend pins. So just be very careful doing these. This is probably a little bit trickier than, than the previous step. it. So your holes should all line up on your top board with your middle board and then we'll screw all this together. So you get a couple of screws, spare and spare brass standoff as well. So the one thing I've picked up straight away is the SD card slot. That one's hidden so basically once your SD cards inside here there's no way of getting it out so I am just wondering how the setup will be to download your log files from it I guess we'll work that out when the time comes 
because I don't really want to be taking the board apart every time to get access to my SD cards. So what we'll do now is uh, hook up our extender and uh, install install iNav. So quickly going over the wiring diagram of this, uh, I'll put a I'll put a picture of it up on the screen so you can see with me here. The top one here you can put in. Uh, things like LEDs, that's what that is. So they're just ground, 5 volt, and um, LED 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what we've got here at the bottom, we've got the digital video transmitter for your DJI HD. Plugs into here. Next to it here you have GPS module. This one here will be for your analog video transmitter. And beside that you've got uh, analog camera. Okay, USB extender will go into this here. Uh, S-Bus receiver over on this side here for your pins, so I'll go in there. Up the very top here you can put in your Express LRS, so that's where I'll be putting my receiver in because I run Express LRS. Airspeed sensor will go over on this side here and you've got a spare slot there for I guess whatever else, so I won't need that. Uh, I'm just going to show you basically what a, the basic setup is. So we'll get out this and we will install iNav. This is the one here we're after, just like that. Right, right let's go over to iNav now and we will set that up and install our firmware on it. Okay, we're here in iNav. Currently I've just uploaded this, well I've just installed this to iNav 6.1 which was released, iNav 6.1 configurator and what we will do is install the latest and greatest firmware on our SpeedyB F405. Alright so plug in the, uh, the SpeedyB into the computer, it should fire everything up just like that, very pretty. All right, so what we're going to look for here, we need to go into uh, Firmware Flash Hell. And the good thing with iNav2, it, it automatically selects the firmware. I like that idea. SpeedyB F405 Wing. And we're going to go F405 Wing 4 passage. 6.1 and we'll load the firmware online and we will install we will flash the firmware so it's erasing what's on there and it'll install brand new version of iNav 6.1 Programming successful, so that's all good. So what we're going to do now is go into our. We're going to connect. So what we'll do, I'm just going to select what this is at the stage. So my FX61 is an airplane without a tail. It's a Delta Wing. So we'll select Delta Wing. It'll load the defaults. And then what I'm going to do is just copy and paste my uh, my CLI default files that I have saved. That's all my settings. That's all my settings that are already on my FX61. So everything will be exactly the same once I've put this flight controller in the board. So as you can see, as we move the flight controller everything's going good so we'll go into calibration and we'll calibrate the accelerometer because it's very important that you hold this totally still when um, you're doing your acceler accelerometer calibration here so we'll click calibrate accelerometer Place flight controller in a position shown in the image and press calibrate button again. Repeat for each six positions, keeping it stable during calibration. So it doesn't matter which order you go for. 
we'll start with it laying flat like it is at the moment. So we'll calibrate this first. Okay, so that's good. Now we're going to move it to this side here and we'll calibrate that. Then we'll move it, I'll stand it this way next. We'll calibrate this way. And we'll go upside down and we'll calibrate that way. The main thing is that it's kept still. Hit it for the top one. And the last one here, I'll just stick it so that it's still in here. Okay, calibration's finished. So that's all good. We'll save and reboot this. And we'll just go back to set up and just double check everything's everything's still correct. So the arrow on the board obviously is showing the facing of the front of the craft. You can change that if you need to, but I'm going to leave mine exactly how it is here for this setup. So that's the front, that's the back, that's the left side, and that's the right side there. So that's all good. Now what we'll do now, we'll go into the CLI here and we will copy across our, our diff all file. So if we click uh, load from file, open up uh, my iNav 6.0 default settings. So we'll execute that. That's going to install all that. Um, I'm copying the OSD layout, my mixer settings. Basically everything I'm going to copy, except I don't want to copy some of the stuff in the master here. Um, I'll copy my auto launch settings, uh, GPS, that sort of stuff. So that's already set up. And I'll copy over my PIDs too. And it's rebooting, so that's all good. It's basically set up now, ready to go. That's um, Speedy BF 405, all set up, ready to go. It's a fresh board. Do a very stable accelerometer calibration, uh, but don't import your old settings from your diff file. See, the problem I had with my old flight controller is I had to turn the degrees around for this one. I'm going to leave as it is. If I need to alter the arrangement, it'll just be a matter of of changing the uh, the amount of yaw that I'm going to be moving it. Obviously, if that's the front here, and I want to change it so that's the front, you're going to be taking the yaw and moving it uh, 180 degrees yaw. So that's basically everything set up. If we go through everything now, mixer should be all set up correctly exactly how the FX61 is set up now. You see protocols good, everything's good, GPS isn't hooked up, that's why that's not showing. So yeah, all my, everything's hooked up, all my auto trim, everything now. Ports are a bit different, so we're going to have to, I'm going to have to modify the ports a bit because they will be a bit different. Uh, so that is something else too you want to watch when you import because uh, all your UARTs, I've got six UARTs here, whether the old, uh, the older one only had four, so you will have to redo that. So going through everything else, barometer, magnetometers, none, pitot tubes there, range finder, yeah, all good. Everything's basically set up now, ready to be installed. Fail safe is good. Our PIDs should be exactly how they were. Yep. Now I just want to check my auto launch as well. And my auto launch is all set up correctly too now. And 
uh, I'll also check my modes too. I'll make sure that I, once I've once I've hooked everything up, I'll check the receiver side. So there, there is still stuff to do. Um, it's not just a matter of plugging it in and throwing it in the air. It'd be a bit silly to do that. So all my modes, flight modes, arming is all correct. So how I've had it, loiter, everything's good there. I'll double check that once everything's hooked up. GPS is on, uh, just not connected. OSD, let's have a look at the OSD. So what we'll go into font manager and we'll upload the font. You have to do that every update you do with the firmware. Sensors are all good. Still got airspeed sensor in there yet to go and the GPS. Okay, black box I haven't got set up. So my black box, we'll set that to 3%, 132, portions of the flight uh, loop iterations to log. So it's only gonna do one every 32 um, frames, I think. Onboard SD slot, which isn't there. I'll have to put that in. So we'll save and reboot, everything's good. What I might do is go back into the ports tab here for a second and I might be able to set up my ports as well while I'm here. All right, so your pin mapping for iNav, it's gonna be different for RD Pilot obviously, but I'm just doing iNav here. UART1 will be for um, my Express LRS um, or TBS receiver, if you have that. So if you're using Express LRS, um, UART1 is what you want. Um, if you're using SBUS, obviously U UART2 will be what you want there. Smart port, telemetry, enable soft serial, um, all on two. Uh, UART3 is GPS. Um, if you're using the DJI VTX, that's going to be UART5 and onboard wireless controller UART6. UART4 must be just for um, whichever you prefer to put in there, nothing specific. So for me, my GPS, I need to put in UART3. Now for your motors, so I now have plane. Um, S1 will be for my motor and I've got my servos on S3 and S4. Now, if you go into uh, your into your battery settings in iNav there. Uh, voltage scale needs to be changed to 1100 and current sensor, uh, current scale as well to 195. And just double check your barometer is reading an SPL06001 or just SPL06 is what I've got there at the moment. If you're using a compass, just Double check for your compass too there. I'm not using a compass, obviously. So we're at the bench here. Sorry, it looks a bit filthy, my desk, because it is. Um, got the speedy be back in half again here. All, all it's uh, three layers out. What I have done, I've put the sort of the ESC onto the P power distribution board here. Um, Skywalker 50 amp ESC. Now, I was contemplating on upgrading this to to uh, maybe an 80, at least a 60, but maybe an 80, I think. But I don't know, it seems to be hanging in all right on the plane with its 11 by seven prop anyway, so it wasn't too hot to touch after that last flight that I did, which went for 40 minutes, uh, for nearly 50 minutes actually, 40 kilometer flight, so I, I figure I might as well just keep it. I wanted to put my capacitor on. I don't have a spare capacitor for the ESC, that's big enough for the, the positive and negative. It needs to go out quite a fair way. So I might have to look at getting another one of those just to put a capacitor on this this here. I don't know if it needs it, but we'll see anyway. We'll see. I might, I might just run it as is and just see what happens. But for now, we're going to put this away and we're going to do some do some pins along here for our servos. So that's always a sigh of relief for me. Once I've done my pins, all our pins are done, we're ready to temporarily mount everything. 
What I still need to find out, that's where my SD card slot goes in here. I sure as hell don't want to be pulling this apart every time to get the data off the SD card, so I'm still not sure how that's going to happen yet. So please help me if you know. So I don't need to solder anything more from the look of it, unless I want to jump my VTX voltage uh, from nine volt default up into up to 12 volts on this side here if you can see there's already a solder on it which is default at 9 volts you need to move that across and solder this pad to the middle one and that gives you your 12 volts so I might look at doing that and then on the other side here we have a few servos uh, default is 5 volt there's no solder so if you want 7.2 you need to solder and bridge the top two top two pads. If you want six volts, you have to bridge the middle and the bottom pad. So other than that, I might just adjust a couple of things there. Everything else is ready to plug in here for my for my ESC and my two servos um, SD card I'll put in there so I don't have to take that out at the moment. And we're pretty much just about ready to basically get all our wiring sorted out here because it's just plug and play it's just a matter of connecting the right wire to the white wire in the plane for things like the gps the airspeed sensor vtx and camera basically this uh, airspeed sensor i've got here this is a digital airspeed sensor um so i'm thinking i might put the digital airspeed sensor on the fx61 instead of the analog one which is currently on there it's just a matter of swapping should be just a matter of swapping the modules this uh I2C port here is uh, for the analog and this one here is for the digital uh, airspeed sensor so regarding whichever one you're using you, you plug in so the good thing is I don't have to do any wiring so that's why I thought I might grab myself another one of these while I'm waiting for the parts for the Talon so that also has a digital airspeed sensor or I might just run the analog in that we'll see so that just plugs in so that's a good thing with that there's no, there's nothing else to do with that except hook up my my two pipes. One SD card to go in it. So I've formatted this. It's only it's a 16 gigabyte. It's a bit of overkill, but anyway, it's not actually spring loaded. It's um it it's it's in there fairly snug, but it isn't spring loaded. All right, let's put all this back together again now, and we'll see what we can do with all our with our GPS and all our other equipment we've got some of my favorite parts of this hobby is, is is putting things together like this getting it in the air after you've done your work and seeing it in the air and what it can do it's a great sense of achievement it's a great hobby keeps the mind active and I think it keeps your eyes sharp too when you're looking at planes or drones, whatever you're doing, even RC cars. If you've got something out there you're focusing on that's tearing around at a distance, it can only be good for your eyes. That's my opinion with it. Okay, now you've got the two pins up here, so beware of those two. You don't want to get this one off. I think the best way to do this is line your four holes up on top. You'll feel it sit in there and just gently push it down. Right, our, our board's back together again. SD card inside. Now we're ready just to plug stuff in. And it's basically good to power up then. I think what I might do now, guys, is I want to power this up for the first time. Should have a smoke stopper, but I don't have a smoke stopper, guys. I've, I've checked over everything, so if, if you don't have a smoke stopper, just triple check everything. And I don't see any reason why I would get smoke from looking at all my joints. Everything seems good. Under close, under close inspection, I can't see any issue. Okay, so it powers up. It's nice to see the lights going, no smoke. See these lights here? I've got one flashing light. That's a battery indicator. So you've got four of these. So I've, this is telling me my battery's quite low at the moment, which I know it is. So that's what that is. So on standby, when you plug your plane, you can see what level your battery is. Quite a handy little function, if you ask me, that none of my other boards have. So a full battery will have four lights. 
cool function that you can check when you first power up before your flight that you've actually got a charged battery in there. I mean, you should know what you're putting in, in your uh, craft anyway, but I think that's quite a good little function. Okay, next I want to, I'm just, I'm just trying to sort out all my wires here so I know what I've got and what I'm gonna be using. So, so far I've just got to really hook up these two here to what I've previously got in the plane and then the digital speed, air speed sensor. And then it's just a matter of wiring up my wires. So it's pretty simple. So yeah, hot glue does have its advantages. Of course, it also has disadvantages, but this is why I like hot glue. If you need to pull something out, just heat it up. And yeah, it's messy, but it's, it comes off. It comes off easy. So I'm gonna put the digital air speed sensor in here. That's going to fit in like that. Now, I had the other one set up kind of like that. Although it did work all right. It didn't seem to be affected. I felt that the was a little bit too, not quite far enough out. So I'm going to extend this one out a little bit, I think. I might, might look at putting it out to here so the holes are a little bit further away from the craft. So it creates uh, less chance of... Of, um, undis of disturbed air coming through off the nose. So it did work right before. So, I mean, it was one area back when I built this, I didn't really have an, a lot of knowledge about when it came to this regarding the air speed sensor. So I'm gonna just move it out a little bit here. We'll cut out around here a bit more and the tubing will just run back in like it did before. Right, so the airspeed sensor's hot glued in. I'm not gonna fill that up, that's a, that's a crater that is, so that'll be too, weight, too much weight. But I will um, probably tack it a bit more up here further, and then I'm gonna run some white tape over that just to clean it up for a bit better aerodynamics. Next, what we'll do is, we've got our receiver part here for the Express LRS, our wires. We'll cut these off and we will, we've got four wires there, yes. So what we'll do, we'll cut that off and our Speedy B plug, we'll put this one on that we got with our package. The only thing you've got to make sure you're doing here with this is uh, your TX goes to your RX and RX goes to your TX. All right, so that's my uh, receiver wire all complete now. That's ready to plug into the flight controller. We'll just uh, secure all this up now, a bit of glue, pop him into there. A bit of hot glue and then I'll also be putting tape over this. All right, so that's all my wiring basically routed in, into, into position. I'm gonna put the tape over here eventually. I haven't got any on me at the moment, so I'll do it at a later date off camera, but there will be tape across all this just to make it a bit more aerodynamically efficient. Next step's going to be to do the, on the other side, uh, the other side of the wing. So over here we've got the uh, video transmitter, three wires as well. So we'll do the same, we'll pop him in here. And again, we'll, we'll tape all this later at a later date. So that's everything on the other side of the plane done now. Um, we're ready to flip it over and basically plug pretty much everything in. We've still got another wire to do for the camera, that's about it. Okay, on the other side now, so we've the servo servos here. Uh, we've got the compass to do, oh, not the compass, the GPS to do, sorry. And then our wiring for our camera here. All right, so the wiring is done for the camera now. We've sorted that out. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, this is copper shielding. Basically what I do is um, I isolate the negative and the, and the video feed um, and twist them together and wrap it up in copper tape. Helps keep the noise out of the video I feel. So that's my copper tape there I use. Um, I try and do this. It helps I think with a bit of the noise on your, on your picture 
FPV um, screen. Uh, wrap it, I basically just wrap it around the um, the signal wire and the negative. Um, I do that with my receiver as well, the camera and my um, uh, VTX as well. So yeah, it just helps. So what we'll do next is the uh, GPS. So the uh, Speedy B F405 is now installed. So what I've done, I've just seen before, we uh, put that foam down there for a bit of anti-vibration. Um, I've hot glued everything in. So it looks a little untidy, but I, I kind of wanted to make sure nothing was going to move. Um, all my wiring's been tidied up and um, sort of done to length. Um, it's basically all sorted out. I've stuck. I just stuck it on the iNav just to give it a final check over, and um, everything seemed good. So the only issue I did have was uh, I had my servos around the wrong way. So I just swapped over the uh, the two uh, channel three and channel four. Other than that, it's just about ready. I'm about to go outside and just let it get some satellites. And what we'll do is just, I, I want to confirm that I've got my motor running and spinning the correct um, way. The only other issue I've got is uh, the air speed sensor doesn't seem to be uh, working correctly at the moment. So I, I'm going to look further into that off, off the camera. Um, I think it's just probably something to do with the configuration that being a, um, that's the digital, digital air speed sensor uh, before I had the analog. So. There might be a setting there I haven't changed, so I'll do that off camera, it's not a problem. Um, this here is just my power. I, I use this to power up my external camera there. Um, I, I try and do that on, on all my cameras, on all my planes now. I have a have this spare wire here, and that's what powers the, uh, uh, the FPV camera out there for HD footage, since I don't have the DJI yet. So other than that, we'll go outside and I'll just uh, boot it all up and we'll get some satellites and just confirm the motor's uh, running the correct way so that it's all ready to go for a um, for its remaiden. So guys, we've got... Um, if you're wondering why this wire is, it's my LEDs. So I'm going to uh, work on that as well off camera, connecting up my LEDs. So what we'll do, we'll plug it in. Got my radios already turned on over there. good down they go up and when I'm pitching the craft down the ailerons are down banking one way banking left so everything's set up good there and it's already got 15 satellites so that's that's a lot quicker than usual so what I what I want to do is um, we'll do a mock um, a mock launch just to see what the uh, See if I've got the motor running, spinning the correct way. So yeah, everything's good. That uh, wires are around the wrong way, so if they weren't, all you do is just swap over two of the wires here, and that reverses the motor, so everything's good. It's all basically ready for its remaiden now with the um, with this brand new F405 wing from Speedy B. Really looking forward to this. Anyway, guys, that's about all I can show you here until the maiden. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, anyone else doing the same flight control or any issues, give us a yell if you get stuck or. If you see anything I can improve on, give me a yell too. 
we can all work together. So, other than that, stay safe guys, keep flying and enjoy the hobby inside and out. Um, bye for now, see you on the field probably.